Okay, this is a combination story about Big Pharma, what it's doing to people. And Kyle Kalinske admits that Big Pharma is untrustworthy. Kamala Harris, you know, is bringing up this idea of a uh, policy of fighting for price gouging. So I just want to just play two videos real quick, and then we're going to go into the story about how vaccines are costing money and people are still going broke. After all, in the richest country in the world, we don't have health care. So let's go ahead and pull up this video here. Just wanted to share it with all you lovely, beautiful people so all of you could see firsthand. Let's play it. People don't like our institutions for good reason. This is this is Kyle before the blonde Eminem uh, clone story. So for them to say these same assholes who've been lying to me all along are now going to tell me to do some shit for my own well-being and force something into my body. Hell the fuck no. And so I hear that and I'm like, yeah, you got a point. Now, this just so happens to be an instance where it's like, yeah, I know they've been wrong a thousand times and I know you shouldn't trust them and you shouldn't and you should be skeptical. But this is a rare instance where they're actually 100% correct that this would help you, so you should probably go get vaccinated. For example, dealing with an issue like price gouging. But what she's doing here and what Tim Walls is doing here is we're going to actually bring up the policies we want to do. We want to ban price gouging. Every reasonable person is anti-Big Pharma because of the price gouging, because they rob people, right? We invest up front. Oh, get it now, folks? As soon as, soon as you compromise your values, now Big Pharma's A-OK. -okay. Hey, folks, how's Big Pharma treating you? Type 1 for, oh, kid, it's working just fine. I don't know what you're talking about. The Type 2 man, F Big Pharma. I wonder how many twos will be in the chat. Front, uh, the taxpayers do. We create, the universities create the medicine. Then Big Pharma swoops in, buys up the rights to it, sells it back to you, and price gouges you. You pay for it on the front end, and you pay for it on the back end. The medicines work, but you're being price gouged. That's the real criticism. People don't like our institutions for good. Now, I want to play another video here. It goes in more detail about, hey, why would you trust the big pharma? You could take anti-establishment views to the dumbest possible fucking place. And I've seen it a million times. I'm sure you've seen it too. But a great example of this is every reasonable person is anti-big pharma because of the price gouging. Because they rob people, right? We invest up front. Uh, the taxpayers do. We create, the universities create the medicine. Then Big Pharma swoops in, buys up the rights to it, sells it back to you, and price gouges you. You pay for it on the front end, and you pay for it on the back end. The medicines work. But do they, though? Do they, really? Because there's been a couple instances here and there that where things don't work. Sort of like how the, uh, you know, the COVID vaccine. Turns out you still get it. WTF. You're being price gouged. That's the real criticism. Nationalize big pharma. That's the real criticism. Then a bunch of idiots take that and they go one step further. No. The problem isn't the price gouging. The problem is in capitalism and the, and the profit motive. The problem is that the medicines actually don't work. And Bill Gates is trying to poison you and put a microchip in you through the vaccine. And they're actually trying to poison you and kill you with toxic drugs that don't actually work. So they go from being anti-big pharma, reasonable, they cross the line into, I'm just anti-modern medicine and anti-vaccine, and I'm a fucking idiot who wouldn't know a placebo-controlled double-blind study if it hit me over the fucking head. That's what happens in this space. And uh, I Yes, he was raging out at independent media or, or new media. But I want to play a video here, too, just, just so you guys know that when you have people who compromise on their values, give up on what they once used to fight for, you have situations like this that take place where, again, I want to pull this up here. Millions lose Medicaid benefits as states reevaluate eligibility. And you know who's going to get involved in that, too? You guessed it, Big Pharma. Um. My apologies. Let me go and rewind that. Laura Nakin is legally blind, confined to a wheelchair with cerebral palsy. Even though she's 34 years old, this Jacksonville, Florida resident cannot do much alone. You need help with everything from yes, from getting up, getting up to eat, um to preparing meals, to going out in the community. I need help. I would say almost 24-7. And yet for more than a month, Aiken says she was alone overnight 
after the state of Florida revoked her essential Medicaid coverage. It was pure panic because I'm like, what the heck happened? During the pandemic, the federal government required states to keep providing health care coverage to Medicaid recipients, even if they lost their eligibility. Then the public health emergency went away and eligibility rules came back last year for the program that's supposed to help low income and disabled Americans. Since then, more than 25 million people have lost coverage during what's been dubbed the unwinding of Medicaid. And according at the height of the pandemic, we'll never forget. And when we asked for force to vote, people went to bat for AOC and her fantastic members in the squad. All what we asked for them to do was form a coalition and that they would have a legion, an army of supporters and volunteers at their side. And what did they do? This is violence. And they went ahead and supported old hagbag Nancy. You know. Sometimes I wonder if AOC ever looks back at how Matt Gates used force to vote. I wonder if she would ever have the stones to do that, which she probably doesn't and never will. But force to vote does work. And in the height of the pandemic, when we asked our quote unquote progressive leaders to fight, they bent over backwards for the Democrats. Yet you still have people like TYT or Joy Report or Secular Talk going to bat for them all the time, every time. But somehow, don't worry, folks. Hold their feet to the fire, and we can negotiate with them. Hey, folks, are you still open to negotiating with the Democrats so we can get what we want? Type one for yes, Kit. They send me emails, text messages, and phone calls all the time, and I know they're serious about it. Type two, I'm done with negotiations. I'm done with negotiations. I wonder how many twos will be in the chat. According to a health policy research group, roughly 70 percent of those who lost coverage did so because of procedural reasons like paperwork issues, though some may genuinely not qualify anymore. I have mail for you. Okay. Kimberly Bryant helps lead Aiken's care team. She says Aiken received digital notices that were not sent to her care coordinators. Even if she did find this online. Would she have been able to read this? No, she can't see that because she's legally blind. Many patient advocates say Florida's unwinding has been particularly sloppy. And it's causing a lot of stress. They estimate thousands of disabled people like Lauren are being impacted in that state alone. And now plaintiffs in a class action lawsuit allege the state has violated the constitutional rights of tens of thousands of Floridians ending coverage without adequate notice and with little or no explanation of the actual reason. We repeatedly asked Florida officials for comment, which they never gave. So we went to a press conference to ask Governor Ron DeSantis why people who should have Medicaid lost coverage. I'm not sure that's true. The secretary of the Florida Department of Children and Families stepped in to say this. We're committed to ensuring that anyone who is eligible maintains coverage. We do have an appointment Friday. But without coverage, Bryant says she took out personal loans to pay Aiken's care team. A little bit over $12,000 now. $12,000. Richest country in the world. We're supposed to trust the Democrats to save the day. When you have individual citizens doing everything they can to make sure the people that they're supposed to take care of are taken care of, yet they're going to debt now, too. I'm going to let you on a little secret. These politicians, when they see you dead and dying in the street, you think they're going to stop by and say, oh, what happened? No, they're going to walk over your corpse or say, oh, my goodness, get this inconvenience out of my way. That's right. I want to get you guys angry this Friday. Your politicians look at you as an inconvenience. You're a problem to them. You're an annoyance to them. But every election cycle, like an abusive partner, What do they do when they realize that you might leave them? Oh, I promise I'll change. I love you. Let me fight for you. I promise I won't steal from you again. Do you want Medicare for all? Do you want reproductive rights? Do you want investment in your infrastructure? Oh, please, take me back. I will never cheat on you again. 
And there are plenty of suckers who are Pied Piper, thanks to TYT or Majority Report or Secular Talk or corporate media. You got your politicians, your activists, and your actors and actresses saying, we got to vote blue to stop Trump. And look, Trump's no different. But my goodness, Democrats, the, the fact that you have succeeded in getting people to give up their ability to think critically, all the while still falling for your same abusive patterns, is, is sad and impressive at the same time. It, it comes to me as no surprise why people have turned off from politics, why people have walked away. But we can't walk away. The politicians in D.C. are not going to help us. Kamala Harris will not negotiate with us. Kamala Harris won't sit down. Kamala Harris isn't going to do a goddamn thing about Big Pharma. Now, don't worry. I got I got one more little caveat story for uh, Big Pharma. You guys won't believe it at the end. Yes. Of your money. My money. Why would you put out $12,000 for someone it, you have only known months? I guess because if it was me, um, I would want somebody to care. I couldn't walk away. Late last. You know, I think I've lost all my heartstrings. I still got some still attached. That lady said, what? I couldn't walk away. Someone had to care. Do you see a politician talking like that? No. Kamala talking like that? No. None of them are going to talk like that. Because they haven't showed us that they care. No loans to pay Aiken's care team. A little bit over twelve thousand now. Twelve thousand dollars. Yes. Of your money. My money. Why would you put out twelve thousand dollars for someone it, you have only known months? I guess because if it was me, um, I would want somebody to care. Yeah. I couldn't walk away. Late last week, Lauren Aiken's care team says her coverage was restored. It took almost three months and a team of people helping her. Meanwhile, Aiken says she's lost faith in the system that's supposed to help her live life to the fullest. But don't worry, according to Kyle, everything's fine. We can trust Big Pharma and then by proxy, maybe even the Medicaid to Medicare system, right? We can trust it, right? It's all okay. Everybody, calm down and stop complaining. The system is fine. Do not a panic. I never panic. Forever, never, ever panic. It'll all be okay. Will it? Won't it? I want to pull up this article here. Hey, folks. Once for free. Remember, COVID-19 vaccines now cost up $200 for uninsured in the USA. So now, guess what? When they start doing those mandates, because you, you, you know they're going to try and do something like what happened in 2020 again. They're going to be... You must get vaccinated. Pay your $200. This will once again lead to my theory. <clears throat> Watch. Give them time. If these politicians really want to show how crazy they are, they're going to enact a law where they're going to charge you like $300 just to walk outside. Uh, excuse me. We saw you're trying to leave your residency. Did you pay your mandatory $300 just to walk outside for one hour? So let's talk about it. the latest COVID vaccine now costs 200 bucks. That is, guess what? Two Benjamins. That's right. Ben Franklin, the only person smiling on U.S. currency because he was never president and was the highest bill ever. So there you go. For the roughly 25 million uninsured people in the USA due to the defunding of a federal programming that previously covered the cost, the Washington Post reported Tuesday, it's the latest tear in the safety net as pandemic era programs wind down, the newspaper reported. COVID-19 COVID vaccines were free for everyone. In the U.S. from 2021 to 2022 per federal policy. However, in January, congressional Republicans negotiated a deal that rescinded $6.1 billion in emergency coronavirus relief funding, which killed the Bridge Access Program launched in April 2023 that covered the cost for the uninsured. And look, I know we all have our opinions on the vaccine, but the reason why I'm playing, putting up this article right there and talking about it is because, folks, if they're going to do that for the vaccine, Guess what else they're going to do that for? All of your other prescriptions. You're not safe. And each state will vary. But how sad is it in this country? Richest country in the world, and we can't take care of our people. Richest country in the world, and you got people going to credit card debt just to take care of the people that they're supposed to take care of. And that one woman who got her system or, or got her uh, thing restored, 
her coverage restored. How many countless millions are still left waiting? How many countless millions are probably alone in their house? You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to say something. And each of you will have to make your own decision on how you wish to proceed going forward. But I always say, you know, keep an eye on your people. Check on your neighbors, your friends. You know, I'm not asking you to be a hero or save the day 24-7, but we got to keep ahead on our swivel, folks. It's up to us to take care of each other. It's up to us to look out for each other. That one woman who said someone had to care because what if it was me? Had to hold back a little bit of those waterworks, but uh, that's a good person. And we need to start acting like that because the politicians don't care, but we have to care. And I don't care where you stand politically or generation you're part of or who you're going to worship or the color of your skin. If we don't stand together, we will die alone. But don't worry, folks. According to Kyle, Big Pharma's doing all right. Medicare for all. Hey, whatever. Don't worry about it. Oh, the system left you abandoned? Oh, my goodness. You died in your house and no one could take care of you. Trust the system, folks. It'll never let you down. How do you feel about the system? Type in the comment section below. How is Medicare, Medicaid, treated you or your family members? How has Big Pharma treated you and your family members? You know, last I checked, wasn't there this organization, this company called Johnson & Johnson, you know, and they had this, they had this thing. Oh, yeah, Oxycontin, right? Getting people addicted to it, right? Which leads to the opioid crisis. Heaven forbid, Big Pharma would never do something like that ever again, right? Right? 